Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity. People in the music and entertainment industry had to know that, that Diddy was, like, abusing, you know, basically. This goes all the way to the top. Diddy was an FBI informant and was feeding information to the feds. Between Diddy and Epstein, there's, there's, there's probably several thousand hours of footage here. Diddy fired me. Why? Um, not for the reasons he said on TV. I wasn't willing to uh, do what was expected of me. Not talent-wise, but in other areas. When Joe Rogan and Elon Musk sit down, it makes headlines, but this time, it's more than just conversation. It's causing disruption to the entire industry. And what, what videos do, do they have of these people where they're willing to defend him? And they're willing to keep, keep quiet about all this? Like how, much, how, much, how many people were compromised? Mr. Combs was in the tape and this other person is, I would venture to say, more high profile than Mr. Combs. They've touched on charges against Diddy that could rock Hollywood to its core. It's like J Lo, like was was like his ex girlfriend, <laughs> and, and it's like now, now deciding she's like warning people. Like, oh, wait a second. Diddy. So how many people did she warn against Diddy? Right. Oh, zero. Okay. <laughs> Potentially exposing other A list celebrities. What's insane is some of the shocking events being exposed have been happening in plain sight. Cat you know. Williams is talking about it. That's a different type of party, though. And then you know we have the top two floors of the hotel while there has been significant effort to keep other things completely hidden. I subscribe to the idea that places have memory. Yeah, I, yeah. I think there's something real to that. That's it why feel, I like, It does feel that way, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure if you go to Diddy's house, it probably feels oh, real like, weird. Probably you know, feels weird walking around that house, probably like, what the f*** in here? <laughs> yeah. In the wake of Sean Diddy Combs' recent legal troubles, a wave of rumors has emerged, suggesting that several high-profile celebrities have fled the country to distance themselves from the scandal. Notably, names like Oprah Winfrey and Leonardo DiCaprio have been mentioned in this context. Some of these connections are clear, others raise questions for one reason. They all appear to have one highly controversial thing in common, and it will shock you. First up is Oprah. Oh, is it true that they paid you a million dollars for the endorsement for Kamala? Not true. Not true, okay. Online rumors suggest Oprah fled the United States, allegedly to avoid being implicated in Diddy's legal troubles. These claims gained traction after footage of her past connections with controversial figures. But here's the thing, there's no concrete evidence to support the idea that Oprah left the country because of Diddy. Oprah Winfrey has been connected to Diddy multiple times in the press recently, from being friends, going to parties together, and even being on her talk show together. Now recently, new footage was leaked from Diddy's parties, including Oprah in them. So what's going on? Well, a source sent Page Six a VHS tape that was sent out as an invitation to the mogul's 29th birthday party in 1998. It's a combination of celebrities inviting you to Diddy's birthday party. Starting off the video, though, is Oprah, which stands out a lot. Other celebrities seen in the tape include Ellen DeGeneres, Chris Rock, Mariah Carey, Magic Johnson, Will Smith, Ben Stiller, Joan Rivers, Steven Tyler, and Tommy Hilfiger. Now it begins with a strange home video style skit in which Danny DeVito's lying on a sofa under a blanket and says, that's right, Puff Daddy is having a party and this is Puff Daddy inviting you to come. Let's have a ball. Then the group of celebs take turns reading from a script detailing the date and time, exactly how fabulous and expensive the party will be, and then reading an address to RSVP to. They then say that the venue would be revealed later. Now that many people have seen this, they think the celebrities in the video were involved in Diddy's crime ring. They're all consulting their lawyers, one TikTok user said, and another wrote, this is a whole videoed list of participants and accomplices. Yeah, it just doesn't look good for Oprah. Now due to this being leaked, there have been claims that Oprah has fled the country. Now let's talk about Leonardo DiCaprio. Each and every one of you can make a difference by doing a simple thing and that's getting to the polls to vote because every vote counts. Social media was buzzing with claims that Leo had fled the country amidst the growing allegations against Diddy. Questions linger about DiCaprio's history with Diddy. Old footage of the two at Hollywood parties is being re-examined. Y'all remember that actor Leonardo DiCaprio? 
Well, Leo is somebody who has been long documented as somebody who really enjoys going to some ditty parties. But he be saying that he only went to the white parties, not the freak offs. Bruh, you sure about that? I mean, it could just be me, but this kind of looks pretty sus. It's just a whole bunch of dudes on a bed, and you're like, you got your skinny little white boy legs out there. Like, what's really happening? Can we get somebody who's better at science than me to measure the distance between Leo's junk and Diddy's mouth? And what are these other dudes doing? Like, I swear to God, that dude is making straight up love eyes at him. And Leo be looking real happy and real relaxed right here. I mean, I don't know, is it just me or does that scream some weird stuff happened? Let me know in the comments. This is where things begin to get interesting. The list of celebrities linked to Diddy that have now allegedly left the country includes none other than Ellen DeGeneres. How are you? I'm doing great, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thank you. Do you like being scared? It's so weird when you see, like, a lot of people saying that someone who seems so nice is yeah. not nice at all. She doesn't seem nice, but that's that people have a very poor judge of character. She doesn't seem nice. It seems forced. Mm. People that are like that all the time, it she doesn't seem nice. It's very forced. Yeah, you know, look at her, look at her. Man. Everyone says she looks so friendly. She looks, yeah, she looks friendly. And she she does look very military. Yeah, she's a militant woman. Again, keep close attention because like the others, there is one common link. Oh, I thought I would teach you an English word so that uh <laughs> Okay, I okay. know English very well. Okay, I, I know. Never sexted. Martha? <laughs> You've sexted? Do you know what that is? I have, used, <laughs> I have used technology for a lot longer than you have, Ellen. <laughs> wow. All right. To who? Is it someone current or is this a while ago? Did you know Ellen and Diddy's connection goes back years? People are now speculating it might not be as innocent as it seems. I, do it. I have to thank you because the last time you were here, you turned... The two have shared plenty of laughs, even joking publicly about partying together. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my... At first glance, it all seemed like classic Hollywood banter between fake friends. But looking back, the signs are hard to ignore. Was there something deeper happening behind the scenes? Okay, well, maybe, maybe I have one at your house. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party though. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it, no, it, it'll go from like 9.30 to like maybe three o'clock, two, three o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it will carry on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I mean um, the, the after party. Mm -hmm. No, I know about them. Um, <laughs> last freak off tape that just got sold on the dark net, which I know because I monitor, went for 500 million. It had multiple stars in it. Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber, Drake. It was a really interesting night. Ashton Kutcher has allegedly also been added to the list for his ties to Diddy. I pledge to be a servant to our president and all mankind. Because, because together, together we can, together, together we are, and together, together we will be the change that we seek. I can't tell that one either. I mean, I'm like actually cycling through them. There was one moment, so I, it's not really a party story, but our relationship was really bizarre. So it started over punked because yeah. he was like, yo, don't punk you me. can't punk me. And I was like, I don't want to tell you. Everybody's on the table. He's like, not me. I'm off the table. And so that started our conversation. We became fast friends and we used to just hang out, watch football together. Recently, reports have started coming out that Ashton Kutcher is actually preparing to move to Europe to escape a subpoena that would force him to testify against Diddy. Both Kutcher and his wife, Mila Kunis, came out in support of Danny Masterson around the time that Diddy's house was raided. I've been on FBI raids where I've seen things that no person should ever see. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. 
The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if that has taken place. Bring in these people. A lot of these people were also aspiring young artists in the music industry. And then these parties were sponsored by Motown Records CEO, Universal Records CEO. This goes all the way to the top. And so you get these people in compromising situations. The drinks were laced, the videotapes were hot. And then at the end of the day, you wake up the next morning, oh, what did I do? And then they have compromising material on you. And then they can guide your career. They could kill your career, but they got you. And it wasn't just people in the music business. As you said, there were athletes, there were celebrities, there were politicians, people from the royal family. And we were also told by the former bodyguard that Diddy was an FBI informant. So he was a snitch and was feeding information to the feds. And we don't know what that means. We haven't been able to confirm it. But even Little Rod said it's not just like Epstein. It could be worse than Jeffrey Epstein. Without getting political, we are going to examine a scenario where politics and support for one politician over another is perhaps being used to tap into the Diddy situation. In recent elections, conspiracy theories have been weaponized as a deliberate political strategy. Real issues and tragic events have been leveraged to manipulate specific communities, a tactic both calculated and surprisingly common in politics. Consider this, what if nearly 25% of the U.S. population could be influenced to vote in a particular direction because of their beliefs? That's precisely what happened when Trump successfully tapped into the evangelical Christian voter base. Now imagine applying the same strategy to smaller, tightly knit groups with convictions as strong as religious communities. The threshold for influence just needs to be adjusted slightly lower. Enter conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories create pockets of individuals bound by deeply held beliefs. When a political figure validates these beliefs, even tangentially, they can galvanize a loyal and highly motivated voter base. Think back to the conspiracies about lizard people or the group named after the letter P. These communities were strategically acknowledged, amplifying their theories and ensuring they couldn't be ignored by the public. Fast forward to 2024 and the playbook has evolved. The same strategies are being adapted to current events and figures, including recent allegations against Diddy. But how does this tie into politics? By linking unrelated events under broad conspiracy umbrellas like the list, political actors can weaponize outrage culture to achieve dual objectives, discredit individuals and further political agendas. Whether or not these theories hold water, one thing is clear. Celebrities with a common thread are being thrust into the spotlight. So, what do they share in common? Many endorsed a particular candidate. Pay attention to each celebrity who is now being accused of fleeing the country or direct involvement in Diddy's situation. They all openly endorse one person for president. So, are they being exposed for genuine guilt or is this a calculated effort to bolster another candidate's voter base? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And I regret to inform you that the celebrities are at it again. <laughs> We are on the brink of an election that demands a choice. You guys care that Taylor Swift endorsed Kamala Harris? Yeah, sure I care. Oh, so why? Why? Because I think it's going to bring in more votes for our gal. Mm -hmm. One second, guys. One second. I see some faces I recognize. Where are you, Jennifer? Yes! And here's something to keep an eye on. Joe Rogan. Reports suggest he's faced pressure not only to shift his political stance, but to publicly endorse a specific candidate. The question is, why? Turns out, voting works. It's real. As much as we <laughs> fucking thought they had it rigged, as much as we thought there were shenanigans and bullshit, and it's just a, a puppet show, and there's no way anybody could buck the system, turns out, voting is still real. Did you, um, were you... Did, were you nervous about endorsing Trump or no? I usually try to stay out of it. Yeah. But I felt like I was getting urged to by Dana and every, oh, there was quite a few people. So just to remind you, this is the guy Joe Rogan was. Ready for this? 
I really believe if yeah. Michelle Obama runs, she might she win. wins. She's good. She's great. She's right. the wife of the best president that we right. have had right. in our lifetime. I've never voted right wing in my life. I consider universal basic income a really good idea. Yeah. I want free college education. Take it easy. Hello, Bernie. How are you, Joe? Wonderful. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. I like Tulsi and I like Bernie. That's it. Oh, yeah? Everybody else can eat shit. Look at you, fucking progressive. Yeah. I think I'll probably vote for Bernie. I think he's looking out for the interests of the working people. And I think he wants people to have a better life and do better. And I'm all for that. And if that means I have to pay more in tax, like people think, oh, you're a socialist. I've heard people say that. Oh, you're a fucking socialist, bro. Like, first of all, he's not even a socialist. Mm -hmm. he, he's a democratic socialist. It's a different thing. I would like to spend more in taxes if they could fix inner city communities and, and and take these poor neighborhoods and we throw a fuckload of Spend more, you fucking Republican piece of shit. 87% of scientists said that human activity is driving global warming. I'm very pro-choice. I'm very women's rights, civil rights, gay rights, trans rights. I'm even universal health care. Obviously, this um, protected status is driving me crazy. This this thing that Trump's doing with children that were born in uh, other countries and then brought over here as children, and then they're talking about deporting them. That drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, that's that kind scary. Of shit. And the hard right version of that is despicable. This, mm -hmm. These people that I see online, why didn't they apply? for citizenship. Oh, who knows? Maybe because they're fucking 13. I don't give a fuck if they broke the law. You don't take parents and kids and separate them. You just fucking don't. You know Alonzo? No, I was a funny comedian. Yeah. He said, he goes, not all Donald Trump supporters are racist, yeah. but all racists are Donald Trump supporters. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 could, that, he definitely awakened that side.